today I will show you how to cook wild rice, organic wild rice, right there. You can see it's kind of a black like that. A little bit closer down here so you can see it in better detail. And there you go. And it tastes much better than the store-bought rice of any sort. Um, you want to you want to have rice that's as close to wild rice as possible. And yep. um, okay, you can put it down, son. And so what you need for this recipe is you need salt, and you will use one teaspoon of salt per cup of rice. Because we have two cups of rice in here, we will use two teaspoons of salt. This is sea salt, Celtic sea mm -hmm. salt. You need, and again because of two cups, um, you need one tablespoon of butter per cup, but because I have a little bit more, I'm using up what I have. Yep, a little bit more isn't going to hurt. Right. Butter That's, is very good for you. Right. What's that is? Then you need five cups, exactly five cups of water. Okay? Because if you put too much in, it won't taste right and the texture will be wrong. If you put too little in, again, the texture will be wrong and it won't taste right. So you need to have the perfect amount of five cups. Yep. Then what I use, I use a slotted spoon to stir it when everything is all said and done before I put the lid on. And when you put the lid on, you want it looking like this because it needs air to escape. Steam. Steam to escape. And uh, otherwise it won't cook if it's sealed like that. So you need to have some, uh, an escape route for the steam. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, thank you. And last but not least, you need to set your timer to 50 minutes because normal rice from the store, I believe, cooks up in 45 minutes. But because this is wild, uh, organic wild rice, black rice, you need more time. And I found over the past several months or maybe a year that we've been eating this that 50 minutes is a good is a good amount of time to cook the rice so what I what I like to do is I put the water in the pot and because you put a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt in before you put the rice in I just put the two teaspoons of salt in right now that way you don't burn yourself and you don't have any uh, safety issues to deal with again it's Celtic sea salt um, real good stuff it's a coarse grain salt it's not finely ground or whatever you can see it's kind of a damp looking salt there it's not the white table salt Morton's or whatever else I would avoid that stuff like a plague yes so. And uh, there's the butter. Careful because it will splash. Yeah, you don't want to just drop it in. You right. want to kind of just put it in there gently. Here. Let's put it on the spoon for now and the spoon will just clean off as it heats up. Yep. And then I take a knife and as my mother taught me throughout my life, you just get the rest of the butter off of the uh, wrapping here and you have more butter so you don't waste it and that'll melt into the water so as the old saying goes waste not want not yes yep my mother a lot was of truth very in that. adamant about that so okay are you gonna put it on the stove yes okay careful please now and this is what you want to do stove. first when you're making this recipe because it's going to take 50 minutes actually a little bit more than 50 minutes so this gets heated up so it's going to take a while for everything to get heated up, right? Put and the, uh, and right. then while it's oh, put the done? rear temperature on high, that way it comes to a rapid rolling boil. How many and then minutes? when it when it comes to a rapid rolling boil, then by that time you might need to stir the butter a little bit, but the salt will be completely dissolved in it. And uh, unlike store bought salt, there's no toxic. Uh, toxic fumes from it. I say that because store-bought salt is classified as uh, 
Well, that's getting into a whole other area. We won't get into all that stuff right now. More on that in the future. But this is real salt, so it just dissolves perfectly. That's that's the correct time. That's the correct time. So don't mess with it. Big bully cup Big bully Now we have to wait for this to boil, but I'm sorry as you were saying, Dad. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, you want to get this going first and then the chicken and shiitake mushrooms can be, you know, made while the rice is cooking. Mm -hmm. So we will be back when it's boiling. That's right. See, the butter is pretty much melted. And I'm still waiting for it to come to a total rolling boil, but it's not too far away from that. Okay, the butter is completely melted. And you can see it's to a rolling boil. So if it starts to boil up like that, you can always take it off the burner and put it, you know, just remove it from the heat a little bit. I like need this. a hot pad. Don't panic, in other words. But uh, now we take the two cups of rice and gently making sure that you do not allow it to splash. And all the grains are in there. Okay, now we take the slotted spoon. Mommy, I the Move the lid, please. The lid is cold to the touch. Okay, now we put it over here, and our helper, assistant chef, will be stirring it up. Yep, go ahead and stir it up, son. I'm, I'm a Watch big, what you're doing. I'm a big boy hot ball. Uh-huh. Did they like hot ball? That's good. Yep, so. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I do Yep. You gonna so go now what do we do that? after that? Okay, that's Is good. Is it completely stirred up? Make sure you get around the, the sides. That's good. Okay, it's like this, remember. Okay, that way. I did pull it. Okay, good. Now what do we do after that? Okay, now let's, uh, we turn off, don't forget to turn off the stove after you're done. Put it over here, put the lid on. Like we said, with about like that, so the steam has a chance to escape while it's cooking. And you turn your timer on, and you put it back on to uh, five because it needs to it needs to cook for the amount of time that you gave it. Yep. And of course, when it's done, if it's slightly a little bit watery for some reason, well, we'll just put it on the wooden preparation table over there and the wood will actually help it to cook even more. It will finish cooking because of the wood. Because wood is kind of a thermal insulator and it will actually uh, retain heat. Yes. So, so there's actually people that will actually ruin a, a recipe by putting finished recipe on a wooden countertop or a wooden cutting board or whatever and it actually continues to cook a little bit so you got to be careful about that. All right now we're gonna get the chicken going. All right, now we're going to get the chicken and the mushrooms ready. And I'll show you what we have here. We have Nature's Promise, um, antibiotic-free, no growth hormones, the whole thing. And we actually got a discount on it. We shopped the right time, saved two dollars. So this was only four dollars and thirty-one cents. Then, in other words, with that discount, so not that much money. Um, and then this here is you have your organic shiitake mushrooms. Very good. So what you want to do is you want to take your knife and uh, and you want to just open these up, of course, wash your chicken off a little bit, make sure it's nice and clean. And do that in the sink there, and then also the mushrooms. You want to make sure that your mushrooms are nice and clean. Don't want to wash them too much, certainly don't use soap on them, okay? But you just want to make sure everything's good and clean. And then we're going to cut it up on the cutting board and get ready to start cooking it. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to put some olive oil in. We like to use the California Olive Ranch, yeah, olive ranch uh, brand. We're going to put a little bit of that in, just enough to kind of have enough in there to it'll spread out over the, over the uh, frying pan. And you want to set that to probably about between six and seven on your stove there is what I like to do. And then the chicken, I like to, to kind of cut it into cubes about maybe an inch and a half by inch and a half or so. That way you get more seasoning to cover the chicken 
you can cut them all at one time here like I'm doing. A lot more dangerous that way and more fun. Uh, greater chance of cutting your finger this way, so it really increases the pleasure of cooking. Dad. I'm being sarcastic there, by the way. <laughs> you, can, you can just do one at a time if it's probably safer that way, but our knife's pretty sharp, so I think we're going to be all right. Ow! Just kidding. Dad. Did I make you jump? Um, okay, so there's that. Do I need to get and the then, arrow ready? No. Uh, and these shiitake mushrooms, you can buy them sliced or whatever else, but I'm just cutting the little dirty ends off these. We're probably just going to fry these up whole, I guess. I'm probably not going to slice them. Um, not feeling real fancy today, I guess, so I won't slice them. But um, these, if you've never had shiitake mushrooms, they're really, really good. They're very tasty. I really like these. We had them a while back. Uh, actually, our one book that we got about uh, medicinal and edible mushrooms and they talked about shiitake and they said uh, shrimp with um, garlic, parsley and shiitake mushrooms. Will you grab really the good. hot pad? The and wood is kind of falling. Okay. Thank you. No. And this yeah. way. It's there you go. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we tried that and uh, it was really good. And then I tried it with chicken the one time, and the chicken was really good as well. I mean, the hot pad. Thank you. Um, so what you want to do is you just want to wait till this uh, is pretty good and hot. You see a little bit of smoke coming off of it, and um, and then you're going to be putting the chicken in. You got to make sure you stir the chicken pretty good at first because if you don't, it'll stick to the bottom a little bit. But um, you can see the joys of, of living in an old house. Um, you have to re-level the stove every season because the foundation shifts and whatever else. Um, I've leveled this stove so many times I don't even, I just kind of, eh, whatever. <laughs> so on, here we are, here never... we are, yep, yeah, here we are in springtime. So you can see the house is leaning this way here, the floor is leaning this way. So all of our all, olive oil pulls up down here at this side of the frying pan like that. So you have to constantly go like this and whatever. <laughs> so. What you're trying to do here, though, is to get really good garlic shiitake chicken is you want it to just kind of sear the meat on the outside, you know, kind of a golden brown on the outside a little bit, and then you'll see as I'm cooking it, but uh, that that's how it comes out the best. So that's why you want your oil to heat up. You don't want to just, you know, flop the chicken in and pour a little bit of oil over top and hope for the best. No, you, if you want to be fancy, you know, you got to do it this specific way um, and of course you can use butter you know as well but it does it has a lower smoking temperature so it, it it's not quite as hot as olive oil when you get it up to the higher levels of actually I'm going to need that here son so don't remove that um, so yeah we'll get this up to a good heating temperature Okay, here we are. You see how the smoke's coming up off of it? See, there's a little bit of smoke. You have your steam from the rice over here, but here you have a little bit of smoke coming up off of your olive oil. That's go time for the chicken. Put it in there. Sizzle good like that. And it's going to make your stove nice and greasy with all kinds of splatters, but make sure that you have this stirred around good. Probably going to get you on the hand too, but. That's okay, again, that's the joy of cooking. You want to get these coated really good with that olive oil. And most of this will come off the bottom and things too, so don't get too stressed out over that. But just move it around like this. And you just want these to, to fry up a little bit and get kind of just start to get a little bit of brown collar to them. You'll see as it continues here. I am actually going to slice these a little bit. So I have our take the stem off completely like that. And I'll just slice it. Again that way they fry up a little bit better. Yep. You have it. And the end of these is a little bit stiff, so that's why I'm cutting them off. 
I'm just going to fry these up. You do not want to put these in until near the end of the recipe. If you put them in too soon, then they'll just get, you know, it just doesn't turn out too good. Just say it that way. I got enough in so Very precise science here, you know, I'll tell you. Yes. It has to be this way or not at all. Hold on, son. We love our mushrooms. And the recipes are very, very good and actually really good for you as well. They have a lot of nutrition in them. And we're going to be getting more into We have, have actually eaten some wild mushrooms last year. And uh, it's, a, it's a whole other thing, you know, to study the wild mushrooms out there. But uh, we had some puffball mushrooms last year. Mm -hmm. um, young puffball mushrooms. You don't want to get them when they're old and go into the spore stage. But uh, it's pretty good, actually. Daddy. And, okay, Oliver, just hold on, please. Uh, I know you're excited to talk now again, but just... Get this so, Caitlin, you got to stir these. So, okay. Again, you want to keep your temperature up fairly high with this, so that they do get a little bit of brown color to them. Right there, you can see that one's getting a little bit right there. That's what you want. Make sure if you have an area like this where the meat's kind of raw, you want to flip it over so you're getting a good. You know, both sides are cooking. That's good. Okay, hold on here, hold on, hold on. I don't want all those on there right now. So. Daddy, before we have all, we always need my top. Yep. Um, his top ball. That's right. Yep. Big helper here beside me. My uh, little assistant. And I we like to cook recipes together. He likes to help mom with recipes too. Okay, come on. I still study test it. Mm -hmm. You're being goofy. What you're doing? You that one? And I just like that so much. You like that so much. That's important. So. Just about done. I got one mushroom to go here. Cut the end of it all. You might have end up having here in a little bit. You might end up having to add a little bit more oil to our recipe. A little bit more olive oil. Your ends of the mushrooms like that. It's a little compost bin here. You can take it out to a compost pile. Turns back into soil. You don't have to put it in your garbage can so it starts to stink and everything else. Good practice to, to get into. Okay, now we're getting a little bit closer here. You don't want to overcook them because then they'll get real dry. So that's part of this recipe here. What do you they can look see like? Like that and like that. You can see they're getting them pretty dark. But again, you just want to keep, you know, keep that oil. You know, hopefully you have a, a level house. Yes. <laughs> so your stove is level. Um, but, uh, what does it look like when they're overcooked? Well, if they're overcooked, they'll just get, you know, it's, it's not really, they, it can be deceiving because if you don't do the searing thing in the beginning, they won't get the brown look. But if you're just cooking them for an hour or something like that, they're just going to, They'll just really, really dry out. They don't really have a specific look to them because you can keep the low, the temperature low enough that they won't get the golden brown look. But they'll just dry out. So you just want to kind of get the temperature fairly high, sear them, and then mushrooms, parsley, garlic, salt, a little bit of pepper. Which we'll be doing here in just a minute. Parsley right is there. a great anti-adrenal fatigue remedy. Mm -hmm. 
that you can add to your food. Parsley. Parsley. Oh, um, Daddy, only fake only Papa. Okay, put that right there. Huh? Shut the door. Okay, let me grab some salt quick. Be right back. Okay. Now, uh, again, this is going to be a lot of stuff that's just to taste. We like garlic, kind of a heart, uh, strong garlic flavor. So, I'll show you here. At this point, when it's about like that, when you can see it, they're getting good and good and golden brown, but they're still, see, they're still soft. Okay, they're probably a little bit, you know, raw, a little bit inside, you know, rare, I guess you could say, um, inside. Well, that's where you want them to be because they're still going to cook a little bit here. But now's the time when you want to put your mushrooms in, like that. Okay. Now see it's a little bit dry and I don't want my mushrooms to burn. So at that point, this point, you gotta introduce a little tiny bit more olive oil. And the olive oil will turn into a very nice sauce so you don't have to worry about too much olive oil. Obviously you don't want it swimming in olive oil. Don't pour a whole you know bottle in or something like that, but you know, you just want it to be a good uh, Nice and, and you want everything to be covered nice with oil like that so it doesn't you know dry out and burn. Actually I think I'm gonna do a little bit more olive oil because it's just you can see here if you go like that, see it's fairly dry down there on the in the frying pan. So if you when you move it, it's it's pretty dry there. That that can lead to some burning. So a little bit more olive oil just to make sure that we don't get any burning in there. And that should be good. Just keep it so that you you move it and you have olive oil. They're just a light layer of olive oil like that. You see what I'm saying? See, you do not want them to stick. Because that's when they burn. So just move that around. Now, we're going to put some seasoning in, which the seasoning also is going to take up a little bit of that olive oil. So what we do is, you can use fresh garlic. You can saute the garlic, cloves, cut them up. That's really good. We don't have any right now, so what we'll use is just some regular old granulated garlic, not garlic salt. Important. And again, we like to put a lot on, so I'll give a good good coating here of garlic. Granulated garlic. And then hold on. And we want a little bit of a good amount of parsley. And this will blend all in. So you want to sprinkle some good amount of parsley on there, like that. So it looks like a lot. Well, it does until you start to mix it around like this, and then it it blends in more. So it doesn't look like it's near as much then at that point in time. I might actually end up having to put. You want to just keep your your olive oil right at hand here because I might end up having to put a little bit more in. You do not want this to dry out because it'll burn and then it'll taste terrible. This smells really good right now. You can smell it there, right? Oh no, you can't. Terrible. Well, we're thinking about you while we're smelling it and eating it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Don't tease Just regular me. black pepper, brown black pepper. You just take a little tiny bit. You do not want much of this, okay? Because it'll take a spicy flavor if you put too much of it. Then, some of our sea salt. liberal amount of that on there. Again, to taste. If you like it saltier, put a little bit more on. The stuff isn't going to make you feel really bad like white table salt will. Right. There we go. Okay, the lid. Let that cook up a little bit. Now at this point, once you start to get Uh, to this point where it's it's cooking pretty good, you can actually reduce the heat a little bit down to say five. That way it won't dry it out. It's already been you know seared pretty good, but that'll just kind of finish it off. You want it to kind of give it some time to have all the flavors blend together. And again, you can see I'm not stirring this way. I'm stirring with it upside down like that, so that you can push it, and anything that's sticking to the bottom will just come right off that way. And it turns out real, real good. And I just kind of stir it around and just kind of spread it out like that. 
and um, then just let it cook on the rear of the side and just kind of scrape it out like that and there you go. So you just want to let that cook and stir it periodically. If you're stirring it periodically, it's not going to burn on the bottom. I cold. Go ahead and put that stuff away. Yep, that's good. Put that one up on the top. Can you reach it? Oh, long arms. Come on. Big boy helper. Uh, go. uh, good job. How do you want to help you? Okay, go ahead and shut that. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Stir this a little bit more. Smells are driving me crazy. Not awful. Yes, it is. I will go to hot house and apple sauce. I will go to some apple sauce and that mom. You know, when you drive to crazy, if you're driving me crazy, you know, mm -hmm. don't go too far because you can head in, head into the city of insanity. Oh boy. <laughs> So we have about nine and a half minutes left for the rice. This can cook for that amount of time. It'll just get a little bit darker and things. And it'll, right now, the see again, when you use olive oil and you put herbs and, and uh, spices with it, it makes basically sort of an infused oil. And the, the herbs and the, the spices and things will actually blend with the oil and create a really nice sauce. And, um, and tastes really good. Yes, it does. So, uh, it's yeah. the type of sauce that you do not want to waste one drop of. Yep. So we're getting close to being done here. Everything takes on a real nice flavor to it. Again, you know, oh, it's oily and whatever. Yeah, it's olive oil, and you mix it with your rice, and that takes away some of the oil, and it just it all works out really good. Um, you know, if this is too if this is too dry, then it kind of eh, with the rice, you know. But having the olive oil there and that that nice infused olive oil that comes from all the seasoning and that it just blends together really, really nice. So I guess that's it for now. We will be right back with the finished product. Well, let's see what we have. We have just under three minutes left, but it looks kind of dry. It looks a little bit. I put the lid off to the side. And there's some. Oh, no, there's some moisture down there yet. But the whole point is, we're not quite at the 50 minutes yet. We still have a few minutes to go. Right. But you want to check it towards the end there. Depending on your stove, it might actually get it done a little bit quicker. Right. You do not want it to start burning on the bottom. That's a bad idea. And you do not want to do this for too long when there's lots of water in here because then you'll end up with a lot of water remaining, which will be harder to uh, cook down and evaporate. Right. And the chicken over there, I shut the heat off on that because we're just about ready to eat. And it's nicely cooked. I can share that here. Put it back like that. Just for the remaining time. Remember, but wool or cotton work. for a hot pad. Yep. There's the chicken and the shiitake mushrooms. Very good. And uh, hold up the hot pad thing again. I didn't really, really get a good thing on that. Yep. It's an older one, but it's made out of natural fiber. 100% natural. acrylic because it will melt when you yes. get it near heat. Okay, so very important there. We'll be right back when this is all done. All right, we're done. So I'm going to get this rice off of the heat here, take off the lid, get your water dripped off there. The only problem with these, some of these old vintage ones that have just the metal handle like that, you got to always gotta make sure you have a hot pad, um, but we do like it. So now we get a little bit of wild rice on here on our plate. I have to make this look real presentable and everything. Real artistic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the the wood bowl. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I can. Like that. There's your wild rice. Really tasty stuff. Yes. Now a little bit of chicken and shiitake mushroom here. And the wild rice is more filling than the store bought white rice. And even the 
quote unquote long grain brown rice from the store is not as filling as the wild rice. There you go. So there we have it. Wild rice, organic rice with antibiotic free chicken and organic shiitake mushrooms, garlic, parsley, some salt, some pepper. Really good. I think you should give it a try. All right. We just got done praying. We're going to start eating our meal. And uh, this is a really fun time to have um, family time when we get to talk about the Bible. And we like to listen to sermons a lot, listen to hymns. And um, just a good time to talk about plans for the ministry and, and things like that. And if you're a friend of the ministry, I'm just going to release a little bit of a teaser, so to speak, for some future videos. Um, going to be some videos coming out on uh, common sayings of false Christians in the future. Not going to give anything else away about that, but uh, we need to be able to answer people from the scriptures. And there's a lot of false Christians out there, unfortunately, and we are going to be uh, we're going to be discussing that here as we're eating this morning. And um, you know, people come out and they say that they're Christians and whatever else, but their uh, actions and their different attitudes towards truth uh, kind of betrays their profession. Mm -hmm. So that, this is a time that we like to talk about these things as a family. And um, Oliver gets to learn a lot of things too about the Bible and... and uh, so meal time is a really important time. Don't sit down in front of a television and and you know whatever. I mean this this historically this is a time when families get together and you talk and you, you pray and ask the Lord to bless your food and bring other prayer requests before Him. Uh, meal time is an important time for a family. So uh, that is going to be it. I really hope that these videos are challenging you to eat more healthy foods to make sure your nutrition is better and uh, just to challenge you to not go out to eat at restaurants and um, cook in, eat in, not eat out. So that is going to be it and um, we'll see you in the next video. Alright, one more thing here before we close out this video just to show a close up of the applesauce. The raw superfood applesauce, wild apples, wild raspberries, a lot of different superfoods. Really, really, really tasty. And uh, can't wait to eat that. I'm certain somebody's anxious too. But I beat you done, so I get to have my applesauce first. <laughs> it's terrible. So, I do pray that you try these recipes.